now to the latest on allegations of sexual misconduct aimed at politicians, those running for and elected to public office. The day's headlines begin with Congressman John Conyers' decision to step down. He's calling it a retirement, not a resignation. 88-year-old John Conyers announced it this morning on a radio show from his hospital bed in Detroit. I am retiring today. My legacy can't be compromised or diminished in any way uh, by what we're going through now. This too shall pass. First elected in 1964, the Michigan Democrat is the longest serving member currently in Congress. Now he faces multiple allegations that he sexually harassed female aides over the years. One accuser, Marion Brown, said she was fired in 2014 for refusing Conyers' advances. She received a financial settlement. It was sexual harassment violating, violating my uh, body, uh, propositioning me, inviting me to hotels with the guise of uh, discussing business, and then proposition me to, uh, you know, for sex. Another woman, Elisa Grubbs, says she witnessed Conyers touching Brown's legs and buttocks. Grubbs also says that Conyers slid his hand up her skirt in church. Meanwhile, a former communications director for Texas Republican Congressman Blake Farenthold says she faced a backlash after suing him for sexual harassment in 2014. You know, I, I was told that, you know, if I pursued with this, that my career on Capitol Hill would be over, and that was all I knew. Lauren Green ultimately settled for $84,000, but she says she's been unable since then to land a full-time job. My campaign chair. On the Senate side, Alabama Republican Roy Moore is still running in a special election next week. He has denied accusations by various women of preying on them when they were teenagers. Today, the Republican National Committee has resumed its financial backing for Moore three weeks after severing all ties. Top Senate Republicans have also dialed back their calls for Moore to quit the race. Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. There's been no change of heart. Um, I had hoped earlier he would withdraw as a candidate. That obviously is not going to happen. If he were to be elected, he would immediately have an ethics committee case, and the committee would take a look at the situation and give us advice. For his part, President Trump gave Moore a full endorsement on Monday. He repeated his support at a luncheon today with Republican leaders. We don't want to have a liberal Democrat in Alabama, believe me. We want strong borders. We want uh, stopping crime. We want to have the things that uh, we represent. Allegations about the president's own behavior were back in a state court today in New York. Summer Zervos is one of at least 11 women who came forward during last year's election campaign to accuse Mr. Trump of sexual harassment. He said the women were lying, and Zervos sued him for defamation. The president's lawyers say that under the Constitution, he cannot be sued in state court while he's still in office. And joining me now to discuss the lawsuit filed against President Trump and some of the broader questions here is Karen Tumulty, national political correspondent for The Washington Post. Karen, thank you for coming back on the program. As we just said, 11-some women made allegations against the president. He said in the campaign they were all lying, total fabrication. In fact, he said he was going to sue them uh, once he was elected. He has not done that, but now this one woman is suing him. Tell us, remind us, who is she and what is the suit? Um, she was briefly a contestant on his show, The Apprentice, and she alleges that a decade ago, on two separate occasions, he uh, uh, basically forced himself on her, uh, kissing her on one, uh, thrusting his pelvis into her on another. He has said that she was lying. So she is taking him to court not on the act of sexual assault, which is what this would be, but on defamation, on standing up in public and saying that she was a liar. And what, and what are his lawyers saying back? His lawyers are saying a couple of things. One is that um, everybody looks at the precedent of Bill Clinton in the 1990s, when Paula Jones sued him for sexual harassment. It was allowed to go forward. He was allowed to be sued while he was president of the United States. 
President Trump's lawyers are arguing two things. They are arguing, first of all, that that suit was in federal court, that there are different standards in state court, and that, ironically, paradoxically enough, they are pointing to Bill Clinton's experience and saying that that lawsuit, which was allowed to go forward, which took years, which the United States Supreme Court unanimously allowed to go forward, right. really took a lot of the president's time away from his job. It was a big distraction, which, of course, was what Bill Clinton had argued it was going to be uh, and lost. So, so there are two different uh, arguments they are making. How much does it matter? What are the consequences if this case goes forward, if they allow it to go forward? Well, one thing is it is going to go on for a very long time, because whichever side wins, you can assume they're going to keep appealing. Ultimately, the question would become, would President Trump be forced to be deposed in this? Uh, don't forget, when Bill Clinton got impeached, it was over lying in the deposition in the Paula Jones case. And then, second of all, the, the question would be, what else could they go after in discovery? Could they bring in these other women who made these accusations? Right. Could they bring in unshown footage from The Apprentice? And uh, it's, it's as you're reminding us that uh, there was this suit against uh, President Clinton. There was a settlement, ultimately, what, $850,000? $850, but he, he, never, he never admitted guilt, but he did make an $850,000 settlement. It, it is a reminder. We don't know what's going to happen in this uh, case uh, against President Trump. You've been talking, though, Karen, to some of the other women who have made allegations against the president. What are they saying, and why aren't they also coming forward? Uh, I'm finding a couple of different reactions. Uh, there are some women who want to just sort of go back to their regular lives. They have businesses. They have families. Uh, president Trump was suggesting that these women were doing this for the publicity. This is not a pleasant experience for these women. But the second reaction I'm getting from other women is a lot of anger and frustration, because they see these accusations being brought up in other settings, whether it's Harvey Weinstein or whether, you know, it's Matt Lauer. Mm -hmm. And it becomes fatal. These guys are gone almost immediately. And yet, they say every day, they look up and there is Donald Trump on their television. Which is a reminder that the political uh, environment is a very different one from the private sector or the, well, not the public sector, people, where people work in business or work for private employers. But, it, and, and, and I hear women asking today, can, can an accusation against a man who's in public office ever be satisfied? I mean, we've seen some of the, the... We've seen John Conyers today finally announce that he is stepping down. But there's so many other accusations out there, the, the uh, Senator Franken uh, and others, that are still up in the air and unresolved. It, because of the tribal nature in our politics, and we are seeing down in Alabama, it, it does appear that tribal loyalties trump, trump everything, it does appear that in reality, the only real due process for these kinds of allegations in, in politics comes at the ballot box. And it was when Nancy Pelosi and the other House leaders decided that John Conyers was going to be a liability for them politically after, you know, sort of a false start where she was calling him an icon, then all of a sudden they turn and they say, no, this guy has to be out of here. Is there a pattern to how voters have seen these cases over time? The pattern would suggest that if you... The pattern, the two cases that we have seen in the past year would suggest that if you stand up and deny it and then stoke your base, that that is actually, in the current environment, a successful formula. We saw it work for Donald Trump, and it appears to, thus far, have worked for Roy Moore in Alabama. He's... Despite the wishes and urgings of practically the entire Republican establishment, he's still in this race, and he could very well win. And he could very well win, uh, and especially now with the reversal of the Republican National Committee and other, and other Republicans. Karen Tumulty uh, reporting on this story for The Washington Post. Thank you very much. Great to be here.